In how many different ways can you express a number like 22 over 9, for example? As a decimal? Sure, no problem. A mixed numeral, perhaps? Two and four ninths. What about as a continued fraction, as in the example shown here? But almost certainly, more ways than you might think if you start using continued logarithms. Especially once you start using different base numbers. Continued fractions can trace their origins all the way back to Euclid, but continued logarithms owe their inception to a gentleman named Bill Gosper in his 1970s unpublished paper on continued fraction arithmetic. In an appendix to that paper, he described a new type of continued fraction one based on logarithms rather than whole numbers. Gosper realised that continued fractions are a wonderful tool for approximation and for gaining deep insights into the very nature of numbers, both rational and irrational. But they fall short when dealing with very large and very small numbers. He took that idea as a sort of recursive version of scientific notation, had thought about using logarithms. Now his key interest was in the binary case, base 2. His method? Take a number. If it's greater than or equal to 2, then divide it by 2. Keep doing that until it lies between 1 and 2. Subtract 1 and turn it upside down. Once again now, you will have a number greater than 2 and you continue until it terminates when x equals 1. Gosper had, has a flair for language. He described these as a mutation of continued fractions. He thought of each section is a microprocess, each part of the operation. But instead of continued fraction terms, instead of whole numbers, our description language would have only two words, zero and one. A one means I was at least two, so I halved myself. A zero, I was between one and two, so I subtracted one and reciprocated myself. So now I'm greater than one. The example he used, 100 divided by 2.54, which gave an impressive array of zeros and ones. Gosper was one of the early computer hackers, if you like. I think he prided himself to some extent on that. And um, he was interested in how computers could be made into a, a better tool a working tool for mathematics and mathematics research. Computers are well suited to working with approximations, with decimals, but poorly suited for working with exact arithmetic. This was here where his idea of converting any type of number into a string of zeros and ones would allow a computer to handle it easily and to Realise a value as accurate as desired. You'll see his um, expansion there for 100 divided by 2.54. The 0 and 1 array is um, <clears throat> the sort of stuff computers eat for breakfast. But humans, we have problems with that. He was able to see that by counting the sequence of bursts of each digit, of 1s in particular, he was able to reduce it to something more appealing to the human brain. So we see it begins with five ones. A zero says stop counting, start a new count. So there's two ones. Another zero followed by three. So we reduce that impressive array to five, two, three, one, three and so on. 
where the couple of zeros occur after the initial one, which indicates the finish of that particular count, record those additional zeros and move on. Now, Gosper's work has um, drew attention from a number of people in the mathematics research community, but perhaps none more so than the team uh, led by the late, great John Borwine at the University of Newcastle as part of their Karma Association, Computer Assisted Research Mathematics and its Applications. They took the idea much further. They realised that Gosper's idea could be applied to more than just the binary case, more than just base 2. What we see here are a range of different computer fractions, uh, computer, sorry, continued fraction forms for the same number, 22 over 9. The simple continued fraction form first, but now what are, have been labelled type 1, there are three variations on the type 1 continued logarithm, and then two newer versions, type 2 and type 3. Have a look at type 1. Straight away we see something different. This is no longer a simple continued fraction because the numerators are no longer 1. Where do those numbers come from though? The middle two, type 1 reduced, is an attempt to reduce the numerators to 1, similar to a, a normal com uh, continued fraction. And the denominator reduced version reduces the denominators after the leading term to 1. Then type 2 and 3, well in this particular case, they come out looking very much like the original type 1, but that's not always the case. Let's see what's going on here. First I'll point out if you haven't struck this representation before, let's see it applied to continued fractions. So a continued fraction for a number like 22 over 9 can be easily represented graphically in this way. Plot the point 22, 9 in the first quadrant, and you have a rectangle. Slice off part of that rectangle. Since the height is 9, if we want to slice the largest possible rectangle, then that's going to be two lots of 9, shown there by the green circles. And so 18 over 9 is your first first separation, followed by uh, the remainder, four, and, uh, 4 across and 9 down, so that's going to be uh, 9 over 4, 2 and a quarter, there's your 2 and your 4. So um, this method is a nice way of visualising the continued fraction form for various numbers. A variation on that helps us to visualise continued logarithms. Let's have a look now at 22 over 9. So Gosper's method delivers a string of zeros and ones as shown here. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. We count each of the ones. So the first one is recorded. Then the zero says, stop counting, now start again. Then there's a string of two. Another zero ends that string, a string of three. So, in fact, the continued logarithm compact array for 22 over 9 is simply 1, 2, 3. Now, these correspond to powers of the base number 2. So, in other words, 2 to the 1, 2 squared and 2 cubed. You might like to think about it this way. What's the, the nearest power of 2 just below the number we're interested in? So 22 over 9 
is two and four ninths, 2.4 re recurring. Now, the nearest power of two below that is going to be two to the power of one. That's our first term. The other terms then are delivered by the, by the Gosper's algorithm. You see, that's where the two, four and eight come from in our continued fraction array. Now graphically, take your rectangle 22 by 9. The first number 2 says divided into two parts. Take the second of those parts and divide that into two parts. Oh sorry, divide that into four parts. You notice though, they're now being cut across horizontally. And then take the last of those four sections and divide it into eight parts. Each of the zeros in the original Gosper expanded form in our diagram indicates a switch from vertical division to horizontal. We can actually apply this dynamically using our GX web model here. So for instance 19 over 14. We see that the uh, continued logarithm array 0, 1, 1, 2 becomes 1, 2, 2, 4. Now the 1 says take the whole thing, don't divide it. So take the entire rectangle and don't do anything. But because it's the end of the first sequence, the next sequence, instead of being vertical, will be horizontal. So the next says divide that rectangle in two, horizontally. We take the, the lower half of that and divide that in two. Take the right-hand half of that and divide that in four. Let's go back to our, our original, 22 over 9. It has some nice features, and base 2. We won't do step by step. That, I'll leave that for you to pursue at your leisure. It, um, it's explained in more detail further on this page. But we're back to our original 22 over 9. Let's have a look at the type 1 continued logarithm for 22 over 9. The B in the continued fraction represents the base, in this case base 2. Each base 2 is raised to a power. The powers are the numbers in the array. So in this case 1, 2 and 3. I'll point out at this stage, Gosper's original uh, interest was only in the binary case, and so his let's find it. There it is his algorithm said, take your number, say twenty-two over nine. It's greater than two, so divide it by two. Write that down. That's one division. You've now got eleven over nine. That lies between 1 and 2. For Gosper, what that meant then was subtract 1. 11 over 9, if you subtract 9 from that, you get 2 ninths. And turn it upside down. It becomes 9 on 2, or 4 and a half. Okay, 9 on 2, that's greater than 2, so you would then divide that by 2 and so on. What the researchers from Karma realised was that that method works well for base 2, but if you want to use it with other bases, a slight adjustment needed to be made. And we see that in the numerator part of this continued fraction representation. You'll see b to the, the base number to the power of a terms is repeated, numerator and denominator, 
but the numerator is then multiplied by a factor of b minus 1. Now why Gosper perhaps didn't pick that up was that he was interested in the case where b is equal to 2 and so b minus 1 becomes 1. But as we'll see in a moment, if you go to other bases, that produces different results. So our type 1 continued fraction, following Gosper's algorithm closely, leads us to list 2, 4, 8. Each number in the 1, 2, 3 base 2 expansion becomes 2, 2 to the 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2, 4, 8. They're our numerator terms and our denominator terms. And we see how quickly this converges. Now, the researchers from Karma worked out that there were a couple of variations. One they called reduced, and in this case, they got a simpler final result for a little bit more effort. Now, in the numerator, we don't have the power of a base number. We only have the factor of b minus 1. So in case of base equals 2, then that's just 1s, a string of 1s. The denominator terms, though, again, we start with our 2 to the power of 1 as your leading term. But then some fancy footwork. a1 minus a0. So in this case, that'll be 2 minus 1, or 1. The next one, 3 minus 2 plus 1, and so on. So we get what can be a slightly different representation. The denominator reduced reduces the denominator to 1, and we get quite an interesting an unusual continued fraction this way. All converge well. There was just one small problem. They found that convergence was good and finite continued logarithms always gave rational numbers. However, not all rational numbers gave a finite continued fraction continued logarithm. So let's just reset this for a minute <coughs> and um, see what happens when the base changes. So instead of base 2 we're going to look at base 3. <coughs> now straight away the diagram changed. Did you notice? In base 2 it started fairly symmetrical because you were dividing in half. For base 3 we're slicing off the power of 3 directly below our, um, our value. So 22 over 9 is 2.4. The power of 3 below that is going to be 3 to the power of 0. That's then the slice that's on the left. The remainder uh, is, uh, is then divided up accordingly. So again, we have um, a couple of ones which don't produce any visual change apart from switching back and forth between vertical and horizontal. So the first one we actually see is the third uh, value, which is 3, and that says divide that rectangle in three parts. No longer equal, but um, and go to the third part and divide it. After a couple of vertical horizontal switches, it's divided into nine parts. And the last of those, if we went down far enough, would be divided into three parts again. Now we're still sticking with base three for the moment. Let's have a quick look at what these look like. Now, the type 1 continued fraction for 22 over 9, base 3 now, same formula. We start with the same Gosper compact array, 
well, this is the, the base 3 array, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1. We end up with something that looks quite different to our base 2 array. If we compare them, oh, we'd better put this in. So 22 over 9, base 3. <coughs> we won't do step by step. I'll leave that as an exercise. And here are our base 3 expansions. The simple continued fraction, of course, remains the same. But now we see our 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 9. And the numerators, instead of being 1s, are 3 minus 1, 2 times. 2 times the denominator. So you get 2, 2, 6, and so on. See the reduced form and the denominator reduced forms. Now this one works fine. The problems occur when you start doing often quite simple examples. For instance, the number 2 in base 3. Because it's less than 3, it causes some complications. Let's just do six steps. Now we've only taken the first six, but what they found happened was that for certain numbers, even though they are rational numbers, the continued logarithm expansion was infinite. Now that's awkward. So they came up with a different approach, quite a different approach. And this led to what they labelled type 2 and type 3. Well, let's have a look. We might go back to our base 2. Keep things simple first. So there's our 22 over 9 expands to 1, 2, 3. Type 2. And this time we will do a step by step. Our base is 2. So if we're going to convert the number 22 over 9 to type 2 or type 3, we're going to need two lists of numbers. The A values, which we will be as before, the powers of our base number. But another list, we'll call it a P list. Now the A list, the first A list, as expected, is the power of 2 just below the number you want. So the number is 2.44, 22 over 9. The power of 2 below that is 2 to the 1. And so our first A is a 1. The first P number then is our number, 22 over 9, divided by 2 to the power of the A we just found. In other words, divided by 2. And that gives us another 1. We take the floor of each of those, reducing it to the, the whole number part. Now the next step is interesting. The base number to the power of the A we just worked out and our first value minus 2 to the 1 again. We get 4 and a half, 9 over 2. Now we use that as the input. OK, 4 and a half. What's the first power of 2 below that? It's going to be 2 squared. And so our next A is a 2. The P number then will be 4 and a half divided by 2 squared. Well, 4 and a half divided by 4 is a bit over 1, and the floor of that is 1. Feed 4 and a half into this formula, and what comes out is 8. Apply our process now to 8, and our next term is 3, as expected. We're expecting 1, 2, 3. The P value for this is 1, and we get this pair of results. The A list, as before, 1, 2, 3, and the P list, 1, 1, 1. These convert to those, which we've already seen. And in this particular case, type 2 and type 3 come out looking very much like uh, what we had before. That's not always the case. So just check the continued fraction form. You'll see that 
as before, it's composed of b to the power of the various a terms, the base number, 2 to the power of so on. But this time there's a multiple of p. Each p is calculated as we just saw. Let's have a look at another example. 21 over 5, base 3. We won't go through the step by step. Now 21 over 5 in base 3 is a very nice simple example because the compact array is 1, 1, 1. But have a look at the various different forms now. The simple continued fraction for 21 over 5 is 4, 4, 1, or 4, 5, if you, if you like. Type 1, base 3, because, remember, it's 1, 1, 1, so quite as expected, our bases are 3 to the 1 as the denominators, and 2 times 3 to the 1 for the numerators. The reduced form comes down to 3, 1, 3 with 2's, not quite what you'd expect. And the denominator reduced form, different again. But here's the cool part. Type 2 and type, type 3 give us two more variations. So in this case, we have six different continued fractions with which to describe our simple number 21 over 5. What happens when we apply this to other more interesting numbers? Because this is where continued fractions of all sorts tend to shine. They allow us to look inside the number. And as you're probably aware, um, all rational numbers, of course, give finite continued fractions. Irrational numbers, on the other hand, are, are infinite. But some are simpler than others. Quadratic irrationals like square root 2 in continued fraction form give a nice periodic result. The power of this is that I can calculate the square root of 2 using continued fractions as accurately as I like. I'm no longer held back by my calculator's capacity um, or whatever else, whatever other method I'm using. So continued fractions of quadratic irrationals are a fantastic tool for approximation as accurately as you could want. But look at their continued logarithm forms. Once again, we see a periodic result for square root 2, 1, 2, and then a string of 4s. The reduced form, not surprisingly, comes out to be the same as the simple continued fraction. Look at the denominator reduced form. Interesting. This is teaching us all sorts of ways that we can manipulate continued fractions to simplify them for various, in various ways. Type 2 and type 3, once again, interesting. What happens then with numbers like pi? Well, before we get to pi, let's consider e. And we'll bump it up a couple of steps. You may be aware that out of all the transcendental numbers, only one has a regular continued fraction expansion, a periodic continued fraction expansion, and that's the number e, Euler's number. As you see, the continued fraction, the simple form, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 6. Well, if you were going to take a guess as to what comes next, you'd be quite right. 1, 1, 8, 1, 1, 10, and so on. So this is the most rare of things, a predictable transcendental number. Similarly, we find regular pattern in the uh, continued logarithm expansions. You'd have to expand a bit more to be confident of what you were getting.
And finally, a quick look at our friend, Pi. Well, as you would expect, the continued fraction expansion of Pi is a hot mess. It has, it has certain features which recommend it. It's um, the best way known to approximate this number and it is kind enough to show you where to cut off for the best approximations that you can get. If you come across a big number, cut off just before that and you've got a very accurate result. Look at the continued log form for pi base 2. Very well behaved. Very well behaved. Now, what I'm demonstrating here I've created as a, as a working tool, um, a playground, if you like, for exploring and playing with these wonderful numbers. And I would invite you to come and play with me. Um, what you'll find on this page is a lot more detail about each of the, um, each of the various forms, as well as a mathematical toolkit for you to branch out on your own and explore various patterns that you might observe. You'll also find at the top of the page links to uh, some of the wonderful research coming out of the University of Newcastle and others who've, uh, who've worked with them. I would especially recommend this link, which um, goes with a, a YouTube presentation by uh, Scott Lindstrom who was with Karma, uh, well, as far as I know, still with Karma, no longer at the University of Newcastle, but now at Curtin University. And um, this gives you a great deal more detail uh, than I've been able to provide here. I'd certainly recommend uh, taking your time with that. There's also some links to explore further. Generalised continued fractions of various sorts. And also some related mathematical explorations, including fraction trees, paper folding, and exploring these ideas further. Each of these goes to another explora guided exploration page. And there's a, a number of YouTube videos that you may care to watch. The dynamic model developed for this uses a wonderful piece of free browser-based software called GX Web um, that you really have to play with to believe the power that is in this uh, in this little package. Uh, it is a uh, it has two key features for me that make it appealing. One is it's constraint based in its construction. What that means is you want a square or a rectangle, don't worry about it. Create any sort of quadrilateral and then apply your constraints. Say, I want that to be 90 degrees and so on. The other feature is quite magnificent and that is it's built upon a computer algebra foundation. So it just doesn't, doesn't just work with um, numeric forms as do all the other dynamic geometry packages but will also allow you to uh, use uh, algebraic forms and, uh, and explore further. So I would welcome you to um, have a play, follow the links provided and um, obviously I'm still learning about this so I just wanted to share some of the interesting and quite surprising results that come out of this little-known branch of number theory. Thank you very much.